I mean, radioactive fallout. Uranium fever. Where fallout is heaviest, it can even kill those who have not taken proper shock. Broadcasting deep underground in a questionably constructed survivalist bunker is Dave Chaffins and Kenneth Vigue, and your host as always, Mr. Robots. This episode of the Fallout Hub is brought to you by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Open enrollment for advanced robotics courses starts now. Totally nothing sketchy going on. Nope, not at all. I learned that in... and we're live. We are, I think we're live. Oh. So we might as well start the show. <laughs> Welcome back to the Fallout Hub. We were talking about Aerosmith, which has absolutely nothing to do with Fallout. But well, let me welcome you to the first episode of 2021. Fallout Hub is back. We took a few weeks off for the holidays, but we are here, and I'm your host, Tom, and or Robots, with my usual cast of characters here. We've got Dave Chapins, man on the street. Dude. I am I am on the street. This is this is illusion, Tom. Illusion, illusion. And we also have Ken, the man under the sheets. How you doing, Ken? Or maybe maybe the real man under the sheets were the friends that we made along the way. Uh, if it if they were, then good job, everybody. But be safe because of COVID. So we're back. We're in the vault. We never left. We just spent the holidays in the vault. We had a ripping old holiday party, just the three of us and our Mr. Handy. And Mr. Handy was very good at decorating, although he did electrocute Dave. Dave, are you feeling better? I'm feeling a lot better. If you, I mean, it, it, here's the thing. When you, when you get electrocuted by a robot, what really, what really can you do, especially in such private moments that we had? I mean, mm -hmm. or private parts. Got, I mean, you gotta own it. You gotta own up to your private parts at, at some point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and hopefully those didn't get electrocuted too. I, so, <laughs> so before Dave gets more into detail about his private parts being electrocuted, what are we talking about today? We are gonna round up some stuff for you from the things that happened in the last few weeks and the things going on in Fallout seventy six, including Fallout for Hope, guys. If you didn't, if you didn't know about this, and I think the entire internet knew about this, our buddy Ken over here set this up. He corralled all the cats. He got everyone together, and there was a bunch of streaming going on right before, right before the holidays, right in the early parts of the holidays. Ken, how much money did we raise? A hundred and six thousand dollars. A hundred and six. Four K. times the original um, amount that I thought we were going to. So yeah. Holy moly. Holy moly. For St. Jude's for the kids. And that was just, that was phenomenal. Um, I think all the credit goes to you for pulling everyone in and also to anybody who helped contribute and uh, anybody who helped entertain in order to draw those contributions. Everybody yeah. did an amazing job, but it wouldn't yeah. have happened without you, Ken. Yeah, you, it was, you did an uh, awesome, awesome job. It, was a, it wouldn't have succeeded if it weren't for the people involved, really. It, uh, particularly... Um, like many a true nerd came through and, and carried us one third of the way there just in one stream, um, which was absolutely insane that day. Um, the donations were, were updating in real time. That was, it was wild. Um, we had some, some real, I'll be at a lot of fun. If, uh, if you guys check out, uh, the fallout lore cast, um, Tom and I even had the opportunity that week as part of the fundraiser to sit down with Ferret Bowden, um, Bethesda's uh, lead writer, uh, particularly for Wastelanders, um, who who is just, uh, that was incredible. We get a chance to talk to him about lore and everything. Yeah. We also played some games. Um, you guys He's such a fun guy. He, yeah, he is super fun. 
And yeah, he's, no, he's, he's the kind of guy. He's the kind of guy you want to like sit and play Fallout in a room with if you ever get the chance and just talk while playing the game because he would just have a hundred stories about you know things going on and what's. It, it was basically what it was like because you were playing the game, going to places, and we were chatting with him. It was so good. Yeah, that was amazing. And then uh, some fun games that we played too with the team that you can check out. Um, but that week was just it was awesome, um, exhausting but awesome. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, we did a uh, um, Apocalypse Squares as well, which is up on, I believe it's up on your YouTube, on the Chad Fallout seventy six YouTube, and on our YouTube channel actually, the Fallout Hub YouTube channel. Yeah, so go go check that out. Uh, Pete Hines was on there, um, a bunch of personalities that you would have known. All three of us were on there. I got the chance to host it, which was super fun, and um, also the contestants were so fun because they were they were dressed up as Hancock and the Silver Shroud. So we had, I mean, it was just like a Fallout extravaganza. It was so good. Yeah, yeah, our should... contestants are like really, really good and and really committed to their bits. Mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, we couldn't have asked for better, truthfully, in in all honesty. We also yeah. with the the technical difficulties that week were a goddamn nightmare. <laughs> Discord, <laughs> yeah, Discord had a, a DDS attack uh, that week, so a lot of the issues that we were having were related to that. So that didn't help. Um, at one point, Craig decided not to work, so we couldn't record audio. Um, but nonetheless, we made it work, and uh, even after we did Apocalypse Squares, um, we hung out talking with Chip Jocelyn for like another half hour, just about voice acting and life, and that was a lot of fun. Um, really wonderful, wonderful group of people getting together for a fun cause. Yeah, yeah. Such a good time. Yeah. Um, so thank you to everyone who contributed, everyone who even just tuned in. It was so fun having everybody, and hopefully we can raise more next year. I mean, this is going to be a yearly thing. Yeah. yeah, we yeah, already Ken is had nodding. the first meeting yes. for 2021. <laughs> um, Holy moly. So uh, Labor Day weekend is when we're going to form a proper committee this time, so it won't be all on me, um, which will be good. And uh, we're setting a big, hairy, audacious goal of $500,000 that we want to raise. Wow. 500, the half a million? Wow. Well, I, I think you know what? Super attainable. I think... I think we can totally do it. Yeah. I think we can totally do it, and it'll be exciting. Um, and you know, you know how time goes. Uh, if hopefully, well, hopefully, twenty twenty one is different from twenty twenty, and that twenty twenty felt like it took a thousand years. But hopefully, this year will fly by, and we'll be we'll be doing the next Fallout for Hope before we know it. So, um, so let's move on to some Fallout seventy six stuff. What do we have going on in Fallout seventy six, guys? Yeah, uh, in, in, the fall, in the Fallout 76 world, uh, there are some news. There's some interesting things that are going on about um, just some dates. to keep. I like to keep everybody up to date. That's the thing. When we're looking at calendars and you're marking them down mm -hmm. in your own personal mm -hmm. calendar at home, and you're writing down like, oh, today is when I give the dogs their pills because they need their heartworm medication. You also may want to write down that a double score week uh, starting on January 7th and running through 11th. So that's when uh, the challenges count for double. It's like a second round in Jeopardy when everybody lines up and Sean Connery's there and he says, uh, damn you, Alex Trebek. Um, and I'm not going to do the voice because I'd butcher it. Uh, <laughs> following to for a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Anal bum covers for 500. I'll take Le Tits now for 500. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. The rapist. That's my favorite. One. <laughs> the rapist. <laughs> the rapist. Oh God. Um. Uh. Other things. When you're looking at your calendar and you're like, "Oh, I need to figure out when my mother's coming to visit." It's you know Saturday brunch at eleven. I'm talking like this is the real time. I don't know whose mother's coming over on a random Saturday for brunch, but uh, there is a purveyor cell happening uh, January 14th to the 18th, and so that's when the, everything gets marked down. Generally, it's like what 30 percent, 50 percent. Math? I can't remember. I don't remember. I think I don't math remember the percentage. things happen. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Do we have an Excel spreadsheet of like the calculations and tabulations? We need a bookie. We need like yeah. an economist that can yeah. that can like go through and, and 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 look at the rise and fall, you know, of of the various market. What if there was like a, a mole miner character that like tracked all this stuff that it's like, okay, what's that would be awesome. What's the price of a what TSC if, shotgun, you know? Right, right. What we what we really need is the equivalent of Bitcoin for Fallout 76. 
crickets all right let's move on what is going on in season three uh season three uh <laughs> season three it's the uh scribes of avalon uh they are here this season you will step into the world of astoundingly oh, awesome tales to aid the intrepid time traveling his time traveling historian that's hard to say time katie inkwell and as she investigates the mysteries behind an explosion of technological advancements in the medieval civilization of Avalon. Yes. So basically we're doing uh, Doctor Who this month. It seems like that and the librarians mixed together or librarian, you know, like the, the TNT. I like how direct Katie to... Inkwell is just holding a pen that just happens to look exactly like the sonic screwdriver. <laughs> green tip at all <laughs> it's just a magic pen <laughs> but if it's uh it's kind of a hodgepodge that character is is almost from the newer series a little bit river song um the doctor's wife oh. and uh one time Ooh. time lord um yeah so there's there's a little mm. bit of, there's a little bit of a little bit of everything in there a little bit I, wa I stopped watching it after the man with the the fez hat stopped doing it um I, I the, fell man, off. the man with the fez hat. I don't know. He was like, everybody thought he was real cute and he had this little bow tie and a fez hat and they would be like, oh, you're wearing the fez. And then they brought on Peter Capaldi, who I liked in that British sitcom. Let me give you a full review of Doctor Who. Okay, back in 1978. <laughs> we're not going all the way on that. We're not, we're not going there. We're not going there. Uh, so, what, do you, other, what, so, do you, what do you guys yeah. think of the rewards here for this astoundingly awesome season? Ken, do you have thoughts? I've got I... thoughts. There are some things that I I am excited to get. Like some of the clean appliances are great. Um, I'm trying to think mm -hmm. of what some of the big ones are for camp building things, which uh, are really the things that I get most excited by. Yeah. So there's um the so the speed bag. There's the vault bed. Oh, yeah, the speed bag I got. I love that speed thing. Bag. Where do you put that? In your secret pocket? Bring it out of the club, and then you open it up in the bathroom? And well, then... it's funny that you say that. Uh, there's actually a, <laughs> yes. there's a viral video that went around where someone had clipped um, the super mutant in a tank uh, into the punching bag. So oh, yes, yes. if you want to raise your strength, <laughs> you can just sit there and, and, and sock his testicles for about 10 minutes. Yep, yep. That was yep. pretty goddamn funny. I will admit yep. that I actually spit out my coffee when I saw that pop up in my time. That was funny. <laughs> you had to clean off your computer screen. Um, <laughs> let's see, what else do we have? We have the, uh, I'm just going through some of the highlights. The Sportsman's Paint, the Guild of Antiquities Power Armor Paint. That shows up for a few different power armors. Uh, of course, there's lots of perfect bubble gum, which is a new type of thing, right? That wasn't in the game before this, correct? Yeah, perfect because they gum. changed how um, one of the things that they, they, they quietly did with the last update was they got rid of hunger and water. Um, that that it, Essentially, it doesn't affect you like it, it used to. Right. Where It's not a negative to have it low. It's a positive to have it full, right? Right. right. Um, that was where I think they're trying to combine... Um, Gameplay between like they're, they're trying to make it more like Fallout 4 rather than it's um, their original idea for Fallout 76. But I think that was one of their leftover like things that we have on the docket to change and we're going to get to it. And then mm -hmm. they did it. Um, mm -hmm. just because I think that was a complaint of it's like I don't need to eat 10 cans of dog food so I can actually run around and uh, like the yeah, the meal stuff yeah. didn't make a lot of like logic sense. It was also a bummer to just constantly have to be worried about it. Now mm -hmm. it's more of a, well, if I'm, if I don't pay attention to it, it's not a problem, but I probably right. should eat. Uh, it that, kind of flips the mentality of it. That being said, um, a lot of people weren't happy with that change only because um, people who love survival modes in the previous games, like having mm -hmm. the option to, if they just want things to be harder, uh, harsher and maybe a little more realistic. They can toggle that on. Um, and maybe there just wasn't a way to do that universally this time, which is kind of unfortunate. But yeah, a lot of people mm. weren't too happy with the change. But I have a, I have a feeling that it's just a vocal minority. Yeah. That'd be my guess. Yeah, I mean, like, I love playing the, the Fallout 4. Uh, the Fallout 4. <laughs> the Fallout 4. Like, Fallout 4. The Fallout 4, I played on the Vival. Um, 
and honestly, Z Vival. <laughs> um, and honestly, like I prefer to play it that way, but that's because I know the game. Um, right. And I think that yeah. for somebody that's just getting into it, like that's you know that's seeing Fallout seventy six for like five dollars because like it goes on these like ridiculous sales, and I'm like, hey, like pick it up, like yeah. do, do something. Um, I think that that's a little daunting because most people are used to the the regular like, oh, I'm just gonna go in and play, and I'm not gonna have to worry too much about that stuff. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I I understand kind of both sides of it. I also think that it gives you more incentive. Like cooking is not about amassing a giant amount of food now and really looking at, okay, I really need preserved food so that it won't keep because spoilage was a thing. Um, and I think still is for, yeah. for food. And then you're and just food looking- takes a lot of your inventory, like mm-hmm. making sure that you constantly pick up the meat from the things you kill and then cooking it. And then like it, it, it's a bigger burden than it is, it, than it feels like a benefit. Uh, right. But now it's, it's kind of flipped. So that's nice. Um, on a similar note, I, I got the experience of experiencing the game through my wife who has only played it intermittently until recently she was having issues with the game making her feel kind of nauseous on her computer and she has an ultra wide screen kind of like i have so i was like well maybe it's because you're sitting so close to a big screen that it feels like you're jostling around so i put it on the laptop plugged it into the tv and she sat on the couch with the controller which is the way she played the other fallout games and it worked better for her but then she was like okay can you can you hang out with me and just can we just play together like my character instead of us both playing our own characters in separate rooms and i was like yeah that's sure and then i i got the experience of her like she's what like level 18 or something she's not very high but I got to see the world through her eyes as somebody who doesn't understand everything, because we've been playing for like two years now, who right. doesn't understand how everything works, who isn't, oh, has never been into the combat so much as the stories and collecting things. And I, you know, like I had to sit there and say, OK, well, let's rearrange your perk cards and let's upgrade your weapons. And she was having a hard time even just fighting enemies that were balanced because of the new balance changes. It was taking her six, seven shots just to drop a regular mole rat or something. And so she found it very difficult. So I could see the yeah. benefit of this not reducing your character's ability and actually being a buff, a benefit, especially to newer players. Um, but after tweaking some things, she got to, you know, her shotgun was killing things in two hits and then everything was working again. And, um, you know, made it a lot better of an experience for her. But I can totally see that it takes time for you to figure all that stuff out because of all the different systems. Right. So just some thoughts on that. Um, other items on the list, uh, the Red Rocket Backpack Flare is one of the things. Backpack Flares is is a thing. What do you guys think about those? Um, I think that you need to go to the, what, what's that? What's that restaurant in office space? Um, you know, the restaurant that Jennifer in office space. In. Yeah. With all yeah. the flares on the, the yeah, flares. basically <laughs> Applebee's. Yeah. Yeah. I need yeah. to get I need to get a, a flare for that, please. <laughs> I take it back. Speaking of the Red Rocket, that just reminded me the Red Rocket uh, vending machine that is on the scoreboard is just about the most beautifully designed vending machine that they have ever added to the game. Like oh, it, yeah? is, it is honestly stunning. Oh, yeah, yeah, the little rocket flying over the machine part. Yeah, it looks like a futuristic um, gas pump. It's just really sexy. Yeah, it's 76 levels up this thing, but yeah. um, definitely worth worth getting to. Uh, American Tank Hat is one of the things. Bunch of player icons, bunch of, of course, power armor paints. Uh, Settler Special Paint for pistol. Um, you know, I think the best stuff, of course, shows up at the top. But then you get all the way up here to... Um, the Guild of Antiquities Stein with like the horse face. That's beautiful. Does anyone I, actually put those out, the Steins? Like I have a bunch of them. I just, I have never decorated with them. Oh, before. you should put them out. Yeah, you should put them out. Um, and then at, at the very, very top, 99, there's a heavy vault door. That yeah, looks really cool. Tech in chat was talking about that. That vault door actually is really nice looking. Yep. Yep. Um, Inkwell's uh, Chronotron backpack looks really cool. Little little oh. dials and buttons and a little antenna. Yep. Um, Armor Ace helmet backpack flare. It's just a, I don't know, a T60 helmet. Um, so there's some really cool stuff. I, my opinion of this is that it's very, very loaded towards the top end, like to, to the end of the path with all the really good stuff, which of course makes sense, but right. there's not a whole lot I really want before about, I don't know, 50 levels in. That's what I've seen too. And I wish that there was more of the theme 
Like we don't. I, I feel like that. Um, uh, GI Joe and Cobra last season. I, <laughs> the name already escapes me. <laughs> uh, I feel like there there is more GI Joe and Cobra Commander stuff than um, there there is. Um, what is uh, astoundingly awesome Scribes of Avalon? Yeah. Uh, like, yes. The, yes. It was maybe, <laughs> astoundingly awesome Scribes of Avalon. <laughs> there was maybe a missed opportunity because she's a time traveler for you to have like different time zone thematically things like just different stuff to decorate yeah, with. maybe more antiquities or different types of furniture or, or larger structures um i bet they'll loop back around on some of these themes though i think yeah. we'll probably get like a second round of some of this stuff and you know hey who knows maybe they're listening to our show hey guys then, do some time travel stuff well it seems like that they don't want to do and it makes sense because you want to you want to always you know be challenging yourself and making something new like they don't i think want to do existing things like they don't want to do here's the brotherhood of steel season here's the mothman season like they kind of want to forge their own path and be like what have we not really looked into as far as like design so that mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. everybody's working behind the scenes on on you know whether it's quality of life whether it's new content whether it's different stuff but like the design team like of the, the like the artists in the game and stuff um there's not a lot going on right now for them and so i i think it's a good idea to to bring in these new themes and it gives a different kind of flair and stuff that we really haven't seen before um in the fallout universe um so and, real quick i've well go ahead i'm sorry finish what your thought is i've got an idea Go, no, go no, no, you have your idea. I, I need I have you my idea. To your idea. Give it to me. I have me. my idea. I have Give my idea. Real quick, the, the, these uh, last few boards have been based around popular TV shows of current or past time, right? Mm -hmm. So off top of your head, another popular TV show that might show up as a future board. Mm. Go. Ken. Uh, Knight Rider. A, a talk, Knight Rider. Talking Corvega from the future. There you go. Land of the Lost. Lands of dinosaurs? Yes. You think we'll get some dinosaurs? Lots yes. Space, uh, yeah. First thing that comes to mind from a current or past, welcome back, Cotter. Would that work? WKRP in Appalachia? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Popular shows from the 70s. There should be a popular shows from the 70s board. Murder they Island. have a Mork board and Robin Williams. They Golden Ghouls. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Golden Ghouls. Golden Ghouls. That's <laughs> oh my God. Hashtag Golden Ghouls. <laughs> That's, that would be like, so... <laughs> that's, that's like, like, we need to like edit that out of the podcast so that people don't know about the golden ghoul and we need to use that idea and take it all the way to the money bank. Cause that's you know what we should do. We need to pen you know an email to ferret tonight. <laughs> I've got it. I've got it guys. What we need to do is we need to dress up as, as old lady ghouls and do a YouTube channel all about the golden ghouls. Yes, you should do that. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great, Sean. I'm, sure, I'm sure that would <laughs> be go, really popular. It's all you. So, uh, moving on, uh, along with the Season 3 stuff, we have got some quality of life improvements on the way, mm -hmm. including, I'm super excited for this one, a stash size, a mustache size increase to 1,200 pounds. That is a very, very large mustache. <laughs> My 1,200 pounder, you know. I go to the gym and I just have dumbbells in the side of my cheeks. And let me tell you, I wrap my mustache around that and I just start yep. lifting it, baby. Yeah, your neck is huge. Like yeah. Doing those doing those reps of not nodding, nodding. Just they nodding call me the, the mountain stash. And let me tell you something. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a I'll poke your eyes out. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So we're up to twelve hundred pounds. Remember four hundred pounds. So that's, uh, that's three that times the brutal. original amount. Yeah, yeah, and I keep hitting the top of my 800, no matter how much I clean crap out. I keep hitting the top of the 800. Um, it'd be nice if there were certain kinds of things you could, uh, kind of like Elder Scrolls Online has done, show up in a catalog of things you can build. So, for example, if you collect a legendary item and you've got like a double shot exploding whatever pistol and you sell it, that you could build it again it, you, you like you get the recipe to build it if ever you decided to change your character around and build it again but you need the material to build it or you break it down and then you're able to build it again rather than sell it or something like that so that you don't have to hold on to it in your stash with it just hopes that like someday i'm going to go pistol build and i'll need this yeah th there needs to be f frankly the, the i have a real problem with how they roll legendary weapons in this 
game, and and they really haven't done much to uh, uh, other. They haven't Alleviate done anything it. to fix it. Um, yeah. Other than maybe the purveyor, but that made it even that added even more um, because before you were just like killing enemies and you know clicking heads and ripping them to shreds kind of situation. Um, and Bringing this one, star opponent should drop three star gear. Say it with me. <laughs> like there needs to be there needs to be something they need to the thing is like nobody is here here's the secret i'll let you on on the greatest secret of this game nobody's like actually competitively playing fallout 76 there's no <laughs> esports right. league there's no right. like right it's it gets guess what guess what it's for fun it's just for fun guys it's it's just for fun so I said maybe. it's just for fun, guys, but that makes it sound like it's only for mushrooms. But it's not. It's just for fun, comma, guys. Everything, everything is ruined. I, we, can't, we can't go back after that one. We can't go we back. back. Uh, can't. Also, quality of life improvements include viewing items based on the weight of their stack. That's very nice. Yes. Very nice, very handy for you to have lots of lots of items to go through. Uh, separating armor and clothing and food and drink and drugs. That's also beneficial because sometimes I just want to eat a thing and I don't want to take drugs. Yeah, I like the description they give. They're like, you were trying to eat some dog food, but instead you took some like some fury. Yeah. And, that's, and, and like, imagine off. I think about the real life implications of that. Like, that's like, oh, man. I was trying to, you know, get a drink of a coconut water, but I took a drink of Visine. And yeah. look where I am. I was just, I was just trying to drink a Diet I Pepsi, a and now I've done now. cocaine. Son <laughs> of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's no good. That's no nope. good. No. Nope. And it'll also, be easier. It'll be easier in clothing because I think a lot of people are like, oh, I gotta have like people play this game like the they're like packing for their trip for the holidays where it's like i need to have like four outfits depending on what we're going to get into um and i'm and i'm that same way it's like you know i have five pairs of underwear for a three-day trip and that same way in fallout 76 where it's like, like okay, you just <laughs> that's, that's so true everybody does that as if they're just gonna crap their pants two of those days out of the trip uh, right it, right exactly like uh, what if i have <laughs> two gonna happen. accidents <laughs> <laughs> like, I need at least happen, one sports in blazer case. in case we, we end up at the White Spring for dinner. Uh, right. And I need mm -hmm. a, a latex invisible stealth suit for recreation. Yes. Yep. 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 Uh, and, but I and have three like, different types of power armor, just in case. I have like all sorts, like I have like, here's my outfit for if I want to look like the Brotherhood of Steel. Here's my outfit if I just want to look like a white. Like, who are these outfits for? And the answer is they're for me. Because sometimes I like looking more fly than I normally do. You're flyer than the average guy. Flyer than a Dave guy. Flyer than a Dave guy. That's your new rap single. All right. And the last thing on the list is a new tab in your Pip Boy. Not just a new tab, but a tab. Quote, <laughs> new tab. Like for the new things that show up, which is super great because when you've got tons and tons of stuff, sometimes it's hard to, it's hard to find stuff. Yeah, and They're let me like, tell you, for new go? players, for new players in their new tab, when you get a holotape and the quest is like, please read like Proctor Ingram's holotape number three forty three, right. and it's like you're yeah. pulling out, it's like you're pulling out your Bible while you're at the Catholic church, and it's like, please turn to Josiah chapter two verse twenty seven, and you're like, oh crap, I gotta go through all this. What is all this stuff in here? And with this, it's just too much. You, you pick it up, and it's oh, it's a new. It's that's a new. Great. That's, something, great. that's great. I love. I love the focus on quality of life stuff. Okay. Something else that's coming that the the data miners have been been talking about is uh, it looks like the pets are coming sooner than than we expect. Yes. Um, there's some back end changes that that indicate that that's coming quite soon. Uh, Every time anyone says back end stuff, I always think butt stuff, but that's not right. Um, well, what whatever kind of you talk you about. Want? Crickets. Okay. What kind of pet? Um, <laughs> maybe a cricket pet, and give him like a little, a little fiddle Aww. to play. Um, and name him Jiminy. Yeah. Yeah. I want a possum. I want the. An like, opossum. Yeah. I want a possum. <laughs> An opossum. I want a possum. All right. Let me say it. How do we the say it? Here? I want a possum. I possum. want it in my backyard. 
and I, I, I want it I like to it. be near my flower pot. So when I go out in the morning and I got to shoot the crows with the BB guns that are getting in my trash, I can have a possum there looking at me, telling me that everything's going to be all right. Because when you like see that. that little possum smile, that's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. I like that, that the way you say possum that way it almost sounds like there's an L in it. Possum? Well, just wait. I always say just wait till you go to Charleston and you hear like the country people talk about the Canar River, where they always go, Canar. Canar. <laughs> the what? Canar. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, any, any other news on uh, pet stuff? Any, do we know anything else from the data miners? You seem to be plugged in with that, Ken. Dogs, uh, cats, parrots? What are we doing? Yeah. Dogs, cats living together? There is, but I haven't read in detail. Cat dog. Okay. But it looks like they'll be, able, they'll be able to do tricks and different things. Are they so. going to be mutated? Are they going to be weird? No, I think they're going to be like regular pets, like dogs. And weird. Cats, that kind of thing. That's actually more weird. The fact that they're non-mutated. I don't want one of those frogs with all the bubbles on its back, because that's gross. But I do want a little baby death claw. Little baby mm-hmm. death claw sitting in a tree. I don't... Can they climb trees? So I, I think we cars. wrap up our future stuff, but Dave has another thing to say. Oh, it's really, it's really important. But do death claws climb trees? Is this is a like research study we need to undertake? Also, uh, whenever you say data again. miners, whenever we talk about the data miners, I always think that uh, are they unionized? I don't know. It's a good question. Are they mole data miners? I think they're mole people. Yeah, they're, they're data mole miners. So, <laughs> which fair that wraps up the are nothing. So there's are nothing. There's <laughs> yeah, the, the data mine for favorite. the mole miners was wasn't really much of anything, but that's fine. Um, go listen to the episode. So let's move on from uh, stuff coming. Hopefully, we'll get that patch. I don't know. Do we know when we're gonna get that patch? They said it's January. Yeah. January. Right. That's oh. all I heard was January. I didn't know if it was yeah. more specific. Tech also had read dogs and cats will be the only ones right now. They will have a daily quest, and they can follow you on those dailies. Yes! I, I hope wanna, they don't take damage. I'm going to take Tabit into battle. Tabby the cat. Battle, battle cat. Battle cat. Like there the you lo- go. I'm going to call him lion Thundercats! Whoa. Whoa! Whoa! Is he going to have a sword and put it up to his face and say, I have Thundora! He's going to have little tiny underwear. He's going to just wear under, little and, underpants? And boots. Will he, will he pack a few pairs just in case he poos? He will. Okay. Good. I want a dog that I can put boots on, and then he walks like dogs when you put boots on their feet and they walk funny. How do they do? Like this. Oh. That's that's how they do it. Um. Anyway, let's move on to our discussion this week. Hey guys, what would you like to see from Fallout in 2021? Who would like to go first? Ken. Uh. Pull up. Hmm. I'm going to need more shelter budget. Shelter budget. I'm going to need that's more. Your big, I'm mm. going to. That's not the biggest. I have a list. That's that's, right. that's up there. I, Only because. Can, how many things are on your list? This uh, is a festivist for the rest of us. Like yes. this is a. <laughs> airing what is, how many, the how many things? Hole. I'm. How I'm, many things on this list? I'm ready for expeditions. Um, I've been playing cyberpunk. Uh, which is just. Um, such a different world to roam around in compared to Fallout yes. 76. And at this point, because I've been mm-hmm. playing the game religiously for like two and a half years now, um, I've, I've covered every square inch of ground. So expeditions will be a beautiful change of scenery. Um, and I'm really, True. really looking forward to those to, for us to, to just get the hell out of Appalachia to go do something cool and see thematically and lore wise Um, they said some regions would be familiar and others aren't like, it would be great to visit locations that we've never seen in a previous game before, whatever those may be, uh, and just explore something completely new as much as it will be fun to maybe go back to the capital wasteland or the pit, um, or even Boston. I mean, they could take us to some previous familiar locations or even Las Vegas, which would be absolutely amazing. Um, to see what that was like. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. More shelters. Is that your whole list? Uh, no. <laughs> I what, want, else, what else is on your list? I want to see the Enclave. 
I, I want let's get the enclave going. We've got the we've got the brotherhood stuff going. Let's get some threat going. Let's I, I want mm. vertebrates in the sky coming in from the oil derrick. Like, what's up, White Spring? What's up? You cut the you they cut, have been cut, you cut the phone lines. Uh, we're we're trying to what if trying to have a chat here. It's been a few decades. Let's let's get going here. I just, I just had a really cool idea. I just had a really cool really cool idea. My hands are over my face, so it sounds funny. I just had a really cool idea, guys. I'm so oh my! Excited. It's Purveyor Merkmerg. Oh no! Um. Uh, so Tom, here's my really cool idea. Stapler and it's it's garbage. Uh, what's going on here? I gave you my script. <laughs> you gave me trash. <laughs> it's a double. It's a double shot stapler though. No, it it's two it's staples a at once. Slayer's stapler, Tom. This is not what I ordered. It wasn't what I expected. <laughs> Crap! Get out of here with your uh, I've got an idea. Shame. What if? What if they start hinting at Enclave stuff coming back with Modus hacking into things remotely? And like every so often when you go to a like a like a terminal somewhere, like Modus pops up and it says something to you and then disappears and then the terminal looks normal again. That would be awesome. It's not going to happen, but it would be awesome. Like for Modus to just start branching out in infecting systems. That would be yes. Yeah, like other systems in the like, like you get these little like modus pops up and then says a thing and then disappears and you're like, what was that? That never happened before. Particularly because the Brotherhood are are fixing Helios, not Helios, mm -hmm. Lord uh, Atlas. So can you imagine if, if like just as soon as they like finished fixing it, all of a sudden you see modus like come up on the screen and you hear like remote yeah. access granted, and then all of a sudden like right. the thing fires up and right. The Thank you for finalizing the Atlas program. <laughs> Completely mental. Yeah. Thank you for completing Atlas. Modus online. And then you're just like, oh God, what, what did we do? What have we here? Oh, yeah. This what is have we dreamy. here? Hmm. I, I oh. kind of like, I kind of like this, like, ghost in the shell kind of feel. That like would be this, pretty kick ass. Like, what if, like, there was, like, the Enclave is gone, but, like, Modus has, like, somehow, like, got dirt on somebody and has, like, it's like taking somebody in the wasteland and made them into an enclave agent against their wheel. Like he's like started blackmailing people or just like subtly influencing people. And then it's like, Oh, who is it? It becomes that like, you know, are you a synth? Are you, are you a secret communist? Like, are you right. a member right. of the or, enclave? Or what if, what if, uh, so here's how, here's how it goes down. Modus, like they finished the Atlas thing. It, they they finish that, and mm -hmm. then Modus hacks in and is like, "Thank you for completing the Atlas program." And then the the Brotherhoods like Pat and uh, uh, Pierogi is like, um, "Romani sounds like a, a an Italian dish, so I'm gonna call her Pierogi." But that's not an Italian, but it's close. Chicken anyway. cacciatore, just call her chicken cacciatore. I mean, when you think about it, there's some there's some massive <laughs> um, opportunity for some drama here, because now yeah, yeah. you have this section of the the Brotherhood of Steel. That is basically, you know, terminated communications. So anything that happens now may not even be recorded down the road. So mm -hmm. what if this Brotherhood group are the first ones to find out that there's been a covert government operating since before right. the war? And like yes. all of this yes. crazy shit going on on a global scale, but there's nothing that they can do about it. They like, can't. They can't communicate out from it. Yeah. Like, um, that yeah. Would be crazy. So so Romani Romani's like shut it down, shut it down, and then Modus is like, you cannot shut down the program now, and then she's like, we have to turn this off, and then Modus is like, contacting support, and then like contacts other Enclave members who are not in the area, and now they're drawn to Appalachia because of it. And then like electricity shoots out of the thing, and it pulls her inside. And turns her like into a cyber bot, just like in Superman: The Quest for Peace, with Richard. Yeah, Pryor. and then we go, yeah. and then we're in Tron World, and <laughs> and everyone is trying. And, and if this is all a simulation, then now we're inside a simulation, inside a simulation. Well, I mean, I'm all for them getting medallions and then showing up at the green at, at at the at the White Spring, and then um, you know, they go to talk to Modus, and Modus says, "Well, I have these gigantic um." Uh, animal robots that all form land. into one big robot, and then mm. they learn dance moves, and then they get jumpsuits, mm -hmm. and then they're power out... armor rangers. Yeah, so we what figured if, out everything what if the for the next year is actually of a transformer. <laughs> it's got to fight Liberty the entire Prime. Entire resort is just a transformer. <laughs> yeah, with like really gaudy carpet on the outside. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I I, yep. I like it. it out. 
Um, we did it. One thing I would like I would like to see in 2020. Um, this fall, I really want a new area. I the magic of Fallout, I think, is playing it for the first time. Like uh, the exploration. Playing, Playing Skyrim for the first time was like, I don't know, like everything could be dangerous. Like this bear, oh my god, it's a rabbit in the woods. What the hell? Like, oh, there's a wizard. Oh, and and now we're so used to seeing mm-hmm. the enemies where we're like, oh yeah, a super mutant with a Gatling gun. Well, okay, I you know, that's not ideal, but I can done that. Deal with, I can deal yeah. with it. Um, well, a scorched queen. beast uh, that's done nothing. that. It's annoying, you know. I got, but uh, you know, I gotta. You're looking. You're starting to go through your tabulation tables in your Excel spreadsheet, and you're like, you know what? I've got two thousand rounds of ammo. I think I can do this. Um, <laughs> but I think that I think that this game needs new areas, um, and I think that they need to be on probably the size and scale of the other four areas, or five technically, I guess, um, five areas. Uh, I think that is part of the reason why um, ESO is so successful. It's because they continually Absolutely. build off of yeah. uh, build new zones and 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 do more. This is part of why WoW is is so successful. Is they continually are you know they have their game, they iterate upon their game, but they open new zones and give you know players more opportunities for adventure. And I think. You know, they spent this this past year really building stories within the world that weren't there. That 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 I think they needed to out. be there in some in some form yeah. or fashion. Yeah. Um, but I would really like to see them go to a a new area. With so here's like, a question. Here's a question for you, Dave. If they go to a new area and it's on the scale that you're talking about, which is a similar scale to an expansion for Elder Scrolls Online or World of Warcraft, yeah. then that would be a brand new purchase. Mm-hmm. Because that's yeah. how those games, this, uh, every year they every year or two, WoW is on a two, two year cycle, ESO is on a one year cycle, they release a new zone. And if you wanna go to that zone currently in that year when that content is new, you pay I believe for Elder Scrolls Online, it's a, the cost of another full game price. I believe. Yes. Yeah. I. Um, I. Um, the answer of, I think what you're looking for is, yeah, I would pay for that. I would 100% pay for that. I think a lot of people would pay for that. I know that Bethesda mm-hmm. said all the DLC that they're making is free. Um, uh, but they've said a lot of things, and the things that well, they Elder said Scrolls they Online. Elder Scrolls Online defines DLC as the smaller expansion zones and other content mm-hmm. that you can buy. The uh, the big new zones are considered seasons. Is that right? There's a different word than DLC for them. Is it like it is? Do they call it expansions? I mean, that's like an old. Or maybe term. it's just called. Yeah, old, I don't know if they called it expansion, but there's a different word. DLC. When you talk about DLC, it's things that you can buy in the store. Mm. Uh, including the smaller zones. They, they release a major zone story earlier in the year, and then mm. at the end of the year, they release a, a continuation of that story in a smaller DLC zone, and that zone is a separate purchase. But you can buy the entire season of content for, like, one initial price, you know, pre, right. pre-buy it, whatever. Right. So um, they are, like, they have a production that essentially creates a whole year's worth of content for a certain plot line within a region and right, then right. kind of have a big release and then like you know oh and it's oh it ends and then there's on other stuff. cliffhanger there's extra dungeons there's, yeah. there's more story that comes out later in the year and then that content uh after another year goes into the store i believe and then at some point it gets included in eso plus subscription yeah. so if you want to you, you can just get you it as part of game. your subscription that's right, the way that right. that um, Destiny has done it now, where it's like if you buy you get the old like, stuff, if you ju- if you used to be if because they changed made Destiny free to play, um, but you can just like if you buy Destiny for like the retail price, you get literally everything, and then they package it. So yeah. like I because I played more, I played more Wind and Somerset. I haven't played very much of, of um, the Khajiit uh, one and elsewhere, the, elsewhere, and, um, and, um, um, the Skyrim, Skyrim stuff, which is uh, yeah. Gray more. Yeah. Um, and, and I remember that it, it, that stuff was like eventually bundled 
Um, so that yep. like, oh, yep. you could buy the full game with all the stuff for 60 bucks, or you can buy the expansion for 30 bucks. And pretty much it was like, yeah. if you, yeah. now it's not exactly consumer friendly for people that are always there, but I mean, if we're paying, like, if we're paying but those money, are the biggest fans, those are the ones who are willing to pay for it. Right. The ones who and maintain their subscription and play all the time are the ones who are going to go, yeah, I'm going to pre pre-order it because I'm going to play the crap out of it. So yeah, for sure. And then right. the people who aren't there all the time can come back later and pick it up for cheaper or it just gets bundled in when they finally decide to jump in the game and pay for the subscription or whatever. So there's lots of different ways that they do that in an ESO. I wouldn't be surprised if Fallout 76 doesn't move into that model like mm. over the next two years. Mm. Uh, but that would mean that we would have a, you know, these DLCs, which get dropped for free that build out the base game, which they've agreed to do. But then as we expand into new zones, that's no longer part of the original 76 base zone, right? right? So that becomes new content, new stories, new zones. That is a expand, like an expansion cost, right? It's if not the, just DLC for the current zone. Like if mm. the value is there and it's, it's, it's something huge and big and new. Yeah. I don't, I think a lot of people wouldn't mind paying for that. Because right. it, well, I mean, the map currently is four times the size of Fallout 4. So what if they put out another zone that was a quarter of that size, which is the equivalent to the space in something like Fallout 3 or Fallout 4, plus new storylines and characters and things that go on and things to explore, new right. items to find, new monsters to fight, all of that stuff. It feel, That feels like a huge amount of content that's worth 40 I mean, bucks, probably. And I always say that they're more likely to to remake Fallout 3 in the context of Fallout 76 and just put it in there and wrap it together in the package of it's not the same. Mm -hmm. It's not the same story and it's not the same game, but it's the same zones and it's references right. to maybe you right. see the founding of Rivet City. Maybe you do like. Yeah. And they have they, the they have the models and maps from that zone that they could retexture and update, but could still be like. Ten Penny Towers over here, but now it's different because it's two hundred years or hundred and something years in you right. know, before that. And then you know, like rivet over here, and it's a little bit less dilapidated, but it's still these same yeah. rooms and these same buildings. And I think I think that that would be more. I think that would be interesting because there's not there's not a wasteland zone. Like there's not like a classical wasteland yeah. kind of situation, casual situation within Fallout Ca Six. Casual situation. Um, uh, th there's there's really none of that, and so I, I, I'm more inclined to believe that they're going to try. Like, I can't see them not wanting to do expansions because if you have a team that's working on this twenty, I mean, you have a you have a team that's working on this twenty four seven, probably providing right. support for here and there, you know. And I'm not, you know, I'm not sure of how the the Microsoft acquisition goes down, and when Bill Gates decides he's going to step in, he's going to, you know, give all the money to fall out, and then we're going to start all be buying stuff with digital caps and well, no, by June. You know, that's true. So, um, sorry, go on. Oh, I was going to ask you uh, about that, but go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm it fell out of my brain. It fell That's out of my fine. brain. That's fine. Uh, I, I've been thinking, oh, <laughs> can you have a question? You may approach the bench. <laughs> Take it said in chat. No, we're giving you ideas. I want stuff to stay free. I agree with you, but at the end of the day, uh -huh. it, it's still a, a business. In order to build something yeah. that big, like look at Nuka World. Nuka World was ridiculously huge and so much larger and more detailed than the previous DLCs, partly because it was allowed to be because of how ridiculously successful Fallout 4 sold. And so that massive volume of sales, you know, paid for supported it. the yeah. massive development of a really cool DLC. And I think almost all of us say Nuka World was sensational. So if we want something that big, it has to be paid for somehow. Um, because, you know, any of us who've bought yeah. it, aside from Fallout First and the Atomic Shop, there's no recurring revenue stream coming in. Right, right. And th my perspective is, I love that the content's free. Don't get me wrong. I love that. I love getting free content. But I would pay for more content, bigger content, and more expansive content right. sooner if that's something that they were willing to offer, then I would pay for it. Yeah. Otherwise, if that's if they don't want to offer it, that's fine. I'll take the free content as it comes out. But if if they can, you know, if we can pay for it and we get more stuff sooner, great. Yeah, I'm down. And I'm and I think it ties back. We've had conversations about this before, but like Fallout as a brand is going to be a huge thing um, in 2021. That's that's if if this if this Microsoft deal goes down, um, a lot of people see. Um, 
uh, like Master Chief as like the the console, like it, how like Mario is to Nintendo. I think the Vault Boy turns into what m- like turns That's their into mascot? mascot for Microsoft um, and, and and what they have in gaming. Um, and I think that with their show that they have in development, with all yeah. these things and and all of this kind of force behind that brand, they either have. I mean, and I'm not trying to be like, you know, an alarmist, but they either going to have to like stymie out Fallout 76 and say, ah, mm, we're not going to put too many more resources into this, or they've got to double down on it and say, we're going to put a lot of resources into it. And I think that that's more of the case because that. that's a way to, yeah. to monetize a fan base outside of single products. Like and if you were just looking at it from a business standpoint, like it's, Drawing in true Fallout fans, you know, it's like, and people take breaks from these online games. Like I, you know, I play, I play Elder Scrolls, probably how most people play, um, the Fallout fans play Fallout 76, where it's like, sometimes I play, sometimes I don't, sometimes I take a three month break or, oh, you know, they're doing something interesting in there. I might come back to it. Like as an Elder Scrolls fan, I like to to dip my toes in that water. and, And I think that they want that, they want Fallout 76 to be that for Fallout. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the TV show is going to throw jet fuel on the franchise. Like it's going to be Oh yeah. A ton oh yeah. Of brand like, awareness. Anybody who loved Fallout 4 is going to be a massive reconnection. Um here's a question for you guys. Do you think that what happens in the show the way that that's written, do you think there will be either an in-game tie-in somehow in 76 content? Or maybe it'll serve as a platform for like Fallout Five. Yeah, I thought about that. Like it would so, make like since from um, a got, branding I've standpoint. Got thoughts on that? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I've got to, I've got thoughts on that. They tried they've tried to do that for other games before, and what it did was it it complicated the development process for either the TV or the game. Oh. Because they wanted certain things to reveal at a certain time on the TV show and certain things to reveal in the game, and it's it's already hard enough to do television and video games to do them both and coordinate it together is even more difficult if they were to do it and it would be successful they would need to create um a connection to it the same way that like the mandalorian is connected to the main star wars line oh, I see. Yeah. it's in the same universe it's around the same time period but the two things aren't necessarily required to understand right. the other yeah. right and so when people watch the mandalorian the main thing that they're like oh i want to play a game where i'm the mandalorian what that translates to right. is i want to pay a game where i'm a space bounty hunter that has stakes and and characters and flies to all these different planets. It's right. And where's, where's Baby Yoda at? I want I want a Baby Yoda. And then they see something else and they're like, that Yoda, Yoda looks old. That sucks. I don't want that. <laughs> like, right? Like, right. I'm going to return this one. That, it's that, broken and it, it mix. sticks my lunch and um, hits me with a stick. Right. But to do a Fallout game that's based in a part of the Fallout world that's referenced from the games and maybe even a Fallout 5 or Fallout 76, but uh-huh. isn't directly necessary to the way those plots develop, you know, that it doesn't connect like it's part of the story. It's, a, it's an ancillary connection to the story, I think is the way to do it. Uh, there was also some speculation. I've read some articles on some websites recently about the speculation behind uh, Todd Howard's comments about we have Starfield in development, we've got Elder Scrolls 6 and a few other projects. And some of the speculation around that was maybe that is Fallout 5. Maybe there is a Fallout 5 behind the scenes with the TV show coming. And with Fallout 76 not taking off as well as it did, maybe that, um, you know, it's, this year has been a lot better. But maybe that injected something into the, you know, the company to say, okay, well, maybe we do need to be start working on Fallout 5 earlier than we planned on. Yeah. Um, plus, with all the influx of money from Microsoft, that doesn't mean that they can't splinter off some other major, like, main team section to be focusing on that as well. With, you know, Todd Howard being design head of all three of those projects. Right. This... I, I... Oh, sorry, Dave, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. You go ahead. I choose you, Pokemon, <laughs> Ken. Um, this brings up another question because it creates a weird dichotomy. Like, if you take a look at what's happening with Cyberpunk, where, you know, it had a really rocky launch um, that a lot of people compared, you know, to Fallout 76's launch, um, perhaps a little unfairly, um, because Lord knows I, I'm enjoying it on PC, but... It, a lot of people have been saying consistently that in order for that game to survive, it needs an online multiplayer component, which is ironic because um, Fallout 76, 
has that right yeah right. like but maybe but that's it, why it's surviving that's right. why it's surviving like so, if fallout 76 launched the way it did without a multiplayer component we wouldn't be talking about it right now right so it's kind of like well what do you want do you want an offline single player or in order for you to keep coming back do you need an online right. multiplayer is right well the the difficulty having done the cyberpunk show the the cyberpunk lore cast if anyone wants to listen to it it's available um the the difficulty with the game is that it is broad and wide and it has lots of things to do but the storylines end and then the depth of the game in the way to role play the game isn't there like a bethesda title right it, you can go through all the other little quests all over the map you can spend you know 80 to 100 hours doing everything but then once you wrap everything up that's kind of it whereas something like fallout 4 or something like skyrim you can play for hundreds of hours and still not discover everything because there's so much there and there's so much around building a different character type and those kinds of things um cyberpunk was pushed out early and it the depth of the game isn't on the same scale as something like fallout 4 or or skyrim so that's why they're saying it needs a multiplayer component is because that would add to the depth of the game yeah, that, that would give sense. people a reason to keep coming back um or they need to keep adding more dlc which they've they've talked about the next dlc being free uh that will continue the storylines and those kinds of things the way a la witcher did with new storylines um but i mean this isn't the cyberpunk show but i i don't see cyberpunk ever being exactly like fallout or skyrim with with as complex systems i think it's going to be more like um uh, gta yeah. It's going to be more like a, a Grand Theft Auto where you play through the storyline. The complexity of the world isn't super complex. People get scared. They run away when they hear a gunshot or the police hunt you down. But the complexity of the world isn't like a role playing game. But then there's the online component. And that's what adds to the complexity. So that's my I, quick. Story. I agree. I think that I think people have people obviously have too high of expectations for games. Like when you see a game in the marketing material and it's like, oh, you know, assassin's creed be the viking and it's like you were expecting that you were just going to be this viking in norway and and go right across the world because that's what vikings did we went across the we went to morocco and we like but it's it's grounded when you when you when you get into the actual game it, it, it it's fairly grounded um i think a lot of people see these gigantic open world rpgs and think that kind of get like buy into the hype um and i think that a lot of people don't understand that those are apparently very hard to make yes um yeah. looking at <laughs> looking at the uh the problems of cyberpunk looking at a lot of people including myself had some complaints about the scale of outer worlds um both of those games mm -hmm. don't really compare to fallout 4 which was is a way old, is you know a way older game than than both of those, but has a a scale that even though it's only like oh you're just in Boston and the surrounding area like there's a there's a lot to do and a lot to see and a lot to 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 be in that world and you know no Bethesda game works great on launch but eventually they get it good enough and there's enough content there and they open it up for for mods and 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 that in itself yeah and dave like, you've talked they, about the systems you've talked about todd howard being like so like his genius being all the interplaying systems and that's right. what makes these games so interesting we just watched uh awesome games done quick as this week we've been watching it uh we watched them go through skyrim last night with my son and mm -hmm. he's always been a little bit scary he's 10 years old he's a little bit scared to play skyrim it's a little scary for him uh but he'll watch me play and I got to explain to him some of the lore and the way the systems work in the game. But I was like, I was like, this game's crazy because you can play for like 20 hours and just run into normal stuff. And then all of a sudden, two dragons spawn and a bunch of mammoths and, and trolls. And all of a sudden, there's this giant fight in the middle of nowhere because all these systems clash together and wackiness ensues. Right. And that's just one example of the way the systems can play out. And that's what makes these games magical is that there's a randomness to the way the systems work together. Um, and you need a certain amount of systems interplaying to get that magic to happen. Uh, and sometimes it happens in really wacky ways, which is also interesting. But the real world is like that as well, which is kind of interesting, you know? But something with the depth of an Assassin's Creed or a cyberpunk isn't going to have that because the systems are not as complex. This, right. The world is basically centered around you. And that's all that happens is what's around you where you're going. 
rather right. than in something like Skyrim where the courier walked all the way across the map while you weren't even there and something happened all along the way and you found his dead body, you know, like, right. like stuff like that happens in the game. Yeah, so. I um, uh, so, so to, to round off, round off what I want for for 2021, um, I want an expansion Fallout 76. I want it to be a new area. Um, and I also think that they are making Fallout 5. That's pretty close. Uh, I think that it's closer than we even realize than we even dream about. Um, and I You're think just that, willing this into existence. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you everything that I think. And because I think it, it is so. Um, and uh, I, I, I also think that when when Boba Fett comes at the end of Cyberpunk and and kills um, Neo from the Matrix, it's amazing. Oh, sucks. That sucks, dude. You just ruined that part, too. I didn't know about the Neo thing. Yep. Um, all right. Well, I agree. I agree with you guys. More of that content would be great. Um, I, you know, I think anything that continues to expand the world in the games would be really, really good. I like that they're focusing on quality of life improvements. Um, there are some complications with the game technically still. Like I was streaming it earlier today and it crashed my entire computer and I just had to reboot everything uh, while streaming it, which is total bummer. It doesn't happen all the time, but it did. Uh, which game, which game are we talking about 76 or Cyber? 76 76 okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, we're I mean, there's future stuff for 76 so you okay. know i don't know what the problem is with that but it's a 76 thing it doesn't happen when i play other games so it's not my mm -hmm. system it's not obs um so I, I would like a little bit more technical you know improvements but uh, overall the game plays well it's just that's the kind of thing that happens on occasion right yeah. right um i i want that too and i'm i want like the idea of getting like graphical improvements for like computers and next generation, like in my ray tracing or like playing yeah. it at like 60 FPS, like <laughs> I mean, like well, you need a 3090, cool. which is unavailable anywhere because all the all the uh bots buy them before anyone bots buys them, them and puts them on like, eBay for three thousand dollars. Yeah, th that would be cool, but I'm just not, I, I don't, you know, and no offense here, but I don't think it's particularly that optimized to be able to be like all right now we're gonna kick up the engine and see how this puppy goes like i feel like that that's like once you i feel like that sometimes it's like balance on like toothpicks and playing cards and they have it perfectly set and they're like all right now nobody touch it and sometimes somebody touch it and they're like oh guess you what have it. uh yeah, everything broke. jimmy jimmy we told you not to eat at that table the whole thing's gonna fall down yeah so so I, I'm with you of improve it, the steps to getting for me to that, like, oh, we can up the graphics now or we can up, you know, things are going to look better. We're going to include some of the stuff we've got in. Yeah, in we the need new... to add some super glue around those cards and uh, toothpicks. Like, yeah, get them really yeah. solid in place and then build the rest of it. Yeah, origami that stuff, you know, like or, get... origami that stuff. Um, I agree There's some some improvements on quality of life in as far as like the bugs and performance be. Yeah. Be, all right well that's that's our wrap-up for uh things we want for 2021 what did you want though did did you say i i that's what i said i i, so, I so, want some tech tech oh, improvements okay, yeah. i want i want tech improvements i would love ray tracing if they if it doesn't break the engine i, I know pc that. players I mean, have that wonderful like water amazing. effects mod that you've all been playing with i haven't oh I, like, I need to look this look up at, i'm looking this up right now like look Nexus, at my look at my house and my fallout fancy water pond. effects holy crap Huh. <laughs> I'm going to do a video about this. This looks amazing. All right. That's on my list. Um, mm. So we've got a rant today. Who wants to who wants to get up on the uh, Abraxa box? Let's kick it back to Dave. Cool. Dave? Okay. I can. I can. Yeah. I'm dusting off my old Abraxa box. In fact, I need like a little. I need like a. a uh, just like a. I need. Uh, I, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. It needs it needs a, a hammer and some nails. That that Abraxo box has had quite a lot of standing on it this past year. All right, um, this content is not for podcast listeners, but it's definitely for for uh, Twitch Twitch folks that watch us live. In my hand, I'm holding a box with some soap in it, and I'm now putting the lid on the soap, soap box. box. Um, it smells oh, like sandalwood, man. and I am putting it underneath my feet here. So I'm not standing up because, you know, we're all about quality capture content here and proper mic performance, <laughs> uh, as you could tell by our, our Apocalypse Squares game. Um, <laughs> rant. Don't rant. join a daily ops team if you don't plan on running a daily op. 
You think this would go without saying, but if you join a daily ops team, actually join the daily op. I would say many players are patient and can wait on you. If you have to take five minutes to unload gear, sell stuff to vendors, repair weapons, sort perk cards, go right ahead. I can play Zeta Invaders or Wasteland in the starting room. But when I see teammate has completed a quest after 20 minutes of waiting and killing Zaydens over and over, don't message me on why you were removed from the team. If you have quests to do, join casual or exploration groups. If I start up a daily ops and you join immediately, I'm going to assume you're pretty desperate like myself to do one within the next 10 minutes. Just had to get that off to my chest. And I'm here for that. If you commit to something, if you're, if you're in the game, this is my own personal rant. This is called an under rant from the underside. This is called an under rant. Is this what you put underneath the other rant? Right. This is the post. In order to protect your privates from electricity? Rant. Yes, an under okay. rant. Yeah. Uh-huh. Put a wire in the ground. Here I go. Got my soapbox and my <laughs> grounding <laughs> wire. Uh, yeah, if you're going to commit to something, if you're going to commit to a daily op, just, you know, do the daily op. And when you're done, oh my God, when you're done with the daily op, leave the team. Yeah, if you're done, if you don't want to do another one, leave. Go, go do it. Go join another group. It's for your own benefit. Right. Yeah. It's, it, you're not going to, yeah. it's, you're already in, you're going to the it's like you know it's like cleaning up your house it's like setting up an intention you know it's like picking up your garbage when you leave the room Just right take your garbage throw it you out you don't go to the, you don't go to the pool in jeans you go in it's a like swim returning pool. it's like returning the the grocery cart just put it put it where the other grocery carts go it wants to be with its family right exactly exactly you mm-hmm. don't walk around the house in your swim trunk unless no. you 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 live in a waterfall yeah, or, or Florida. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Do you live in? A, well, that's true. That's true. There are people who walk around. Yeah, there are people in Florida who walk around in flip flops and a jacket when shorts when it's cold out. That's a lot of people <laughs> that are pretty stupid. I, I, I've seen that in some twenty degree weather with a, a, some you know some good old cargo shorts and some flip with your hoodie on, and I'm like, okay, that's like ordering a Big Mac. And a Diet Coke and being like, I'm making the healthy choice. You know? Yeah. I <laughs> order Big Macs and Diet Cokes, but it's not because I'm making the healthy choice. Healthy choice. It's just it's because, because the chemicals in the drink Diet the sugar. Coke tell you. <laughs> it's because it I want the caffeine without the sugar. <laughs> That's why. Um, yeah. No, that, I think that this isn't the most, this isn't the worst rant we've ever had. It's I, listen, a consideration not, thing, right? Yeah, we're not here to rank rants. You know, some people rant, you know, the, the point of the segment is, is, is to display emotion in the most purest way possible by internet <laughs> That's form. That's the point? That's the point. Is, is um, okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we're not here to rank who's, who's Looney Tunes or not. Everybody knows that themselves. I think this one is pretty good. And I do like that they're playing Pit Boy games because I honestly 100% forget about those 100% of the time. Arcades. We need an arcade cabinet. Those as a, I got them, that was one of the items on the Creation Club I got for Fallout 4. They're so good. And they are really yeah, good. Yeah, I would build they an arcade. Really Hell yeah. I would do it. But it remind you to actually play them because they sit. Like, I think I have yeah. all of them now, but they sit in my storage and then I forget to. Yeah. No, no. If you had like an arcade, like if like my whole camp, you know what? You know what I would do? I would turn my little, uh, my little underground place. What is that called again? My little shelter. Shelter. I'd turn my little shelter into an arcade. It'd be like a little underground arcade. Totally. Yeah. You could call if I could, it like, the underground mean... arcade. The underground arcade. I want it to be like, I don't know, if, you know, this is like a, a deep cut into some Disney stuff, but in Tron Legacy, which is the sequel to the 1980s to Tron, um, the, they, they're playing um, uh, separate ways by Journey as this dude enters this like old school arcade and they have all the blankets over the machines and he like flips the breaker and all the lights turn up on the machines and he takes the blanket off and it's like dust and arcade lights everywhere. And I'm like, man, this is like the vibe. This dude is vibing right now on this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, aside from the rest of that movie, uh, <laughs> that's the kind of thing that I want. If I could turn like my basement into that, and it's like I go down there and I like have a huge, a huge lever that I just like hold on to, and then I crank up, and all the arcade cabinets turn on, and then 
if I could have it in my camp, if I could get like high scores for people that come, like if you come to my camp. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's a big screen with like high score ranks for each right. game. That would be, like, that if, would be if, amazing. You know, but if like a Butt Nugget 24 gets a high score in the. What'd you say? Oh, have like a proper 80s like score competition, have an arcade playoff. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't show your your uh, account name or your character name. It, it only has three little letters that you put in, just like old arcade yeah, games, yeah, yeah. so that you can be ass. You're like ass, number one. <laughs> ass. Tits, number two. Or ah. Yeah. yeah ah, ah is always on there. Mm -hmm. Bob. But, but especially thing... ass and tit. Those are the two that always show up. <laughs> Here's a good here's a good way of making somebody's day and what I've learned from my local barcade um, back when I would actually go to a barcade barcade sounds like the grossest thing to go to and the most it, it, it does. Most, a lot of fun. I feel so bad for barcade thing. owners. Yes, Aww. I do. What a fun and cool business and something that I legitimately miss but have no interest in going to in this crazy <laughs> time in our lives. Um, if I I would go there and I would play Magic Castle and every time I go there, I would get the first place spot. But I didn't mm. see my name in the rest of the spot. But I'm like really good at Magic Castle. Like, you know, the little bear trying to get all those crystals. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. And Cuper as bear. well. But turns out uh, they reset the scores every day. <laughs> what? <laughs> so it's like for the day, you can be the score. But if you don't meet the high score overall, you don't get your name on the board. But I felt really Aww. good about my skill at Magic Castle. But turns out it's like, yeah, for, on, a, on a given Wednesday, I'm like really good at some Qbert, you know. But there's probably oh, some know. like pinball wizard that's getting Qbert in there and stepping on some snakes, you know. I'm all about and that Ms. Pac-Man. Good old Ms. Pac-Man. Oh yeah. Well, guys, I feel like we have reached the end of the episode because we now we're we've talking talked, about Pac-Man. We've talked about so many things today: Qbert, Cyberpunk, Outer Worlds, Aerosmith, like. What an amazing time. What an amazing time today has been. What a great way what to start an, off 2021. What an amazing know? time to live in. Exactly. So amazing. We had a lot to talk about. Yeah. We did. Yeah. Well, um, good times. Guys, do you have anything else going on that you want to talk about before we head out? We can start with Dave. Dave? Uh, I do this podcast called The Fallout Hub. Uh, it's every Tuesday at 5 o'clock <laughs> in the afternoon. Uh, it's Eastern Standard Time. It's a great podcast to hang out if you want to come and listen to some really terrible jokes, but also catch up with your Fallout stuff. We're like your Fallout best buds, and you can come talk to us about anything. Uh, if you want to reach out to me personally and be like, hey, I'm your Fallout best bud, you can do that on Twitter at, uh, what's my name? Dave Chafins. That's D-A-V-E-C-H-A-F-I-N-Z. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And you can do that, and you can be my friend. We can all be friends. And you can follow okay, us. I'm gonna, follow I'm gonna do that right now. At hey at Dave Chafins. Do it. I I'm I recently your showed Fallout Bud. Yeah, do it. Um, I recently I showed it. my my farming route for experience. Um, with my agility and endurance by showing off how I um how I how I gain experience after the holiday event which is a big mm. joke for I, I did a run the other day around the Capitol complex and ran into a few landmarks from Fallout 76 and it, it took a picture with them. And I see them every day because I run a lot, I run for my problems, you know, run for my health. Um, but I see them a lot and I thought it would be, you know, interesting so that people would, would know how I farm my experience. <laughs> this joke, I need to stop. They need to put me to bed. They need to put me in the coffin sometimes. In the coffin? Wait, yeah, I'm a vampire, remember? Oh, that's right. That's right. Ken, what do you have going on? Um, lots. Uh, we're right now in the middle of episodes uh, three and four um, of the show. Um, we recently brought aboard um, a full-time composer for the show called Caden Lytell, um, and he is just a genius. Um, and he's really, really quick. <laughs> Um, he just cranked out um, a new Sickle Man theme for the next episode that we have coming up. Um, and then he's actually working on the theme song for Cryptid Creeps, which is going to be the episode after that. Uh, so it's only like, what, a year and a half later that we're finally... A year and a half. <laughs> I remember talking to you about that. I think episode two 
of the Chad show. You know, it was percolating back there. The right, <laughs> yeah. right storyline just had to come along. And we that finally had to got, come. Yeah. that episode is going to have everything. It's going to have um, the Flatwoods monster, uh, who is a disgraced lounge singer entertainer um, that Dr. Mark Howsworth is voicing. That sounds an awful lot like Snagglepuss. Um, <laughs> it's, there's going to be a lot going on. Um, so we got that, uh, we got Caden to join us and, uh, I've been enjoying shelter building. Um, I've been recreating, um, the initial levels of Bioshock in my shelter and it came out really, really good. Um, I'm just finishing the surface lighthouse, um, camp on the surface, but yeah, I'm really enjoying playing around in the shelters. Yeah, that sounds really cool. Uh, let's see. I am, uh, I'm streaming a lot more. I've been streaming during the days while I work on stuff and editing videos and, uh, podcast stuff in the morning and then playing some games in the afternoons, including my naked wizard run through of Skyrim VR, which is super fun. I'm seeing if I can beat Skyrim VR without wearing any clothes and being a wizard. Um, my character is not wearing clothes. I'm, I'm wearing clothes. I'm, I'm on stream. You. I would get banned from Twitch if I did this without wearing clothes, so I can't do that. Pooh Baron. But I'm not ashamed of anything. Let's just get that straight. Um, so that's a lot of fun. You guys can tune in for those on uh, Robots Radio's Twitch Twitch page, twitch.tv slash Robots Radio. Uh, it's weird to talk about yourself in third person. Um, other than that, we've got the regular podcast. Uh, tonight, we have the Fallout Lorecast happening in just two and a half hours because uh, my co-host and daughter, Lainey, was uh, feeling a little bit under the weather last night. So we decided to push it a day later. So if you didn't get a chance to see it yesterday, which is everybody, then tune in to it tonight on Tuesday instead of Monday. See how I did that? I just included everyone in that statement. That's true. Everybody uh, didn't see it yesterday, but everybody has the opportunity. That's right. right. That's that's true. Yep. And uh, we've got a bunch of other shows at robotsradio.net, all sorts of Fallout shows and other kinds of video games and even other stuff. So go check out robotsradio.net, check out all the different shows and join us on the Discord, the Robots Radio Discord. You can just search it in the Goog and uh, come on in, in and, and say hi to us. In, in the, the Goog. What? In the Google. That's how, that's how the kids these the days are in Google. I want to get like up in that Goog. You yeah, know? That's, that's what they say. I want to get all cozy up in that Goog. Bet. I'm feeling lucky. That's, that's a thing, too. Sex is great, but have you ever googed? No, no, no. Googed isn't a thing. It's I just in the goog. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to make this pastry, and I done googed it. <laughs> well, Let's see everybody, thank you cantaloupe. for joining us. I'm going to try and, and end uh, this now before this gets too crazy. And if, you, if you want Tom's latest uh, ebook and his very first romance novel, Naked, Witchard, Naked Wizard Run Through, uh, you can find it on Amazon. It's uh, <laughs> exclusively available for Kindle for 99 cents. I love uh, the Google. Yeah. yeah. And, and you can check my, um, <laughs> my uh, OnlyFans page for the actual shots from the recordings. <laughs> It's just me in a VR head headset and socks. Wow. With with Yin Sid's cap on you. <laughs> and uh at that visual, I guess we'll bid you good night. <laughs> Goodbye. Tech says nobody says that, Tom. Tech, Jazz you're hands. ruining my sh my shtick. All right, good night, guys. Jazz See you later. Hands. Bye.